and welcome to Heads Up, the weekly webcast and podcast of the National Headache Foundation. I'm Dr. Lindsay Weitzel, migraine strategist, founder of the Facebook group Migraine Nation and chronic daily migraine survivor. I'm very lucky to be here today with Dr. Tim Smith. Hi, Dr. Smith. How are you? Hi, fine. Dr. Smith is a regular on Heads Up. We all know and love him. Dr. Smith is the CEO of Study Metrics Research. He has conducted numerous clinical trials on migraine medications. We often have him on here talking about the ins and outs of the latest data, the latest research, the latest FDA approvals. And we have an awesome topic today that I think everyone's really been talking about for a really long time. And we want to know about it. We are going to talk about um, combination therapy of anti-CGRP monoclonal antibodies like uh, Amovig, Ajovi, Amgality, and combining them with Botox. So there's a lot of controversy surrounding that, and we're going to discuss that because there is some new data out, and we want to talk about it. So, Dr. Smith, let's get right into it. Um, even though we're going to discuss this topic today and the new data, um, there, there's not really, uh, there really is some debate in the migraine community and in the medical community about combining these two treatments. Can you discuss that for us really quick? Sure. Uh, just briefly, um, with the, these two products, you know, botulinum toxin or Botox has been around and been used for migraine for 10 years uh, with FDA approval. And uh, there's no question that uh, Botox helps many, many people. Um, but uh, to add on a CGRP uh, monoclonal antibody was really not included in the clinical trial scenarios. And we had very little data to uh, support the notion, but even though it is a, a common sense phenomenon that goes on and, and clinicians, you know, uh, logically would like to try them, patients would like to combine them, uh, but the American Headache Society guidelines does not endorse uh, putting the two together, uh, and so it puts uh, clinicians in the awkward position of um, trying to decide if they want to stop Botox to be able to initiate a, a CGRP monoclonal. Right. and. Uh, doesn't really make sense for some patients. If they're getting partial benefit from Botox, you wouldn't want to take that away from them to add another treatment. You wouldn't do it for any other preventives, you know, and so people wouldn't want to do it for this one either. Right. So um, is part of the controversy surrounding combining these two therapies has to do with cost. Am I correct? Uh, probably, yes. Uh, you know, they're both high priced, uh, you know, higher ticket items for the prevention of migraine. And, you know, adding a cheaper treatment to, you know, to Botox, that's one thing. But when something costs, you know, several hundred dollars a month to add that onto the cost of Botox, uh, basically, it essentially doubles the cost of uh, migraine management, which is already, you know, expensive. Mm -hmm. Okay. So like the monoclonal antibodies, um, Botox does affect the CGRP pathway. So uh, are any of the concerns regarding combining these two uh, medications, are they related to this fact? Um, not really. Um, okay. we, we, uh, we don't really have any true concerns about uh, uh, blocking CGRP in multiple you know, different ways. Blocking CGRP is blocking CGRP. And, and uh, we don't, uh, again, we don't have randomized controlled trials to look at that. But, you know, from a deductive reasoning standpoint, we don't think we see any uh, issues with drug interactions, for example. Okay. So we're going to discuss two sets of data today that have come to light related to combining both Botox and these anti-CGRP monoclonal antibodies. Um, the first one, it was a prospective study, and it has been published in a peer-reviewed medical journal. And um, this means that patients were assigned to groups based on uh, the medications and then followed for a while and studied. Um, can you go ahead and talk to us about this data and, and uh, the effects that were found? Sure. So this uh, study was an observational study. It was prospectively conducted, as you mentioned. They took patients who weren't uh, achieving uh, good control of their uh, migraine frequency, 
and added uh, arenamab or amovig to those groups. And then they looked at response rates based on uh, what the patients were on in a pre-existing. So, and there was a cohort of uh, patients that were already on Botox. And so what they were able to do is, is look at uh, additional uh, migraine relief that was uh, uh, achieved on top of the, uh, the Botox um, you know, phenomenon. And, and basically what they did is they looked at patients who had a partial response to Botox and then got an additional response from the CGRP monoclonal Amovig, which is the only one on the market. That's the why that. that yes. That so they done. only studied Amovig in this study. This is an yeah. important point. Yeah, and it was just because it was the only one on the market at the mm -hmm. time. Uh, but uh, if they looked at the goal of trying to achieve another five to seven days of migraine reduction per month, 65% of the people in that cohort were able to achieve that, that additional reduction, which is very significant, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, this could make a difference between someone who uh, went on Botox with chronic migraine, for example, and were still chronic migraine. They were better, but not well. And then you could uh, take off another five to seven days for almost two thirds of that population. And uh, that might get them into that episodic migraine, a much more manageable uh, category of migraine to have. Okay, so the strength, strength of that study was that it was prospective. And um, it did only look at Amovig, but it did have some very good results at combining, in the people that combine Botox and Amovig. Right. Um, the next study we're going to talk about, the study design might have been a little bit weaker. It was retrospective. It was a chart review, meaning they looked at people's medical records and looked back at what happened, but they did look at all three drugs, including Amovig, Ajobi, and Amgality. So can you tell us what happened in that study? Yeah, so this uh, was a retrospective study. They, they reviewed charts of patients that had been started on um, uh, Botox and then had one of the had one of the CGRP monoclonals added to them. Mm -hmm. We mentioned from the beginning that this is a, a rare population, and and this was from the Einstein uh, Medical Center group in in New York. And it's a huge headache center there, so they had a lot of uh, these patients in the in this cohort. And uh, what they did is they calculated the number of um, migraine days per month that this cohort had before into uh, adding before starting them on Botox and uh, what the result was from uh, from adding Botox and then what the additional benefit from adding a CGRP monoclonal to to that and basically in a nutshell this population on average had 25.3 migraine days per month that is a lot this is a very yeah. uh, seriously impacted population of patients and uh, they had a 10.9 day reduction in their migraine days from the addition of Botox, which is good. You know, that's, uh, that's a nice response, but they were left with 14.3 days per month. And many of those days are very significant. So even though they had a nice <laughs> reduction from, from Botox, there's yeah. still a lot of unmet need there, right? Yeah. So with that cohort, they were able to add CGRP monoclonals and they were able to take off another, an average of another 5.6 days per month. So yeah. basically it gets them down to eight, somewhere between eight and nine migraine days per month where they started out with 25. 25. So it, this was a good result. And from mm -hmm. a side effect standpoint, there was nothing out of the ordinary, nothing observed uh, in either study, nothing new. We didn't learn anything new and troubling about side effects from combining right. the two. So that was a reassuring thing as well. Okay. So I think a lot of people are interested in this. Can you give us a brief description of how these two medications, Botox and the anti-CGRP uh, antibodies, might work together in combination to help us feel better? Right. So when we think about mechanism of action for these two drugs, we know the CGRP monoclonal antibodies uh, they have one effect. They mm -hmm. block the effect. They either bind the, the CGRP molecule or the CGRP receptor, but that's their only effect. Botox has a few other effects. It, it may decrease release or, um, yes, may decrease release of other neurotransmitters like uh, substance P or glutamate, and, uh, but it also blocks uh, CGRP release. So if you look at it and you say, well, CGRP and CGRP, are doing the same thing? 
But for Botox, there's an important distinction to make on the CGRP effect from these two, uh, from Botox and the CGRP monoclonals. The CGRP, there, there are two types of pain fibers in the trigeminal pathway. This is the nerve that uh, it brings all the pain signaling from the mm -hmm. lining around the brain and the blood vessels, of course, through the brain, it hits your cortex and tells you that you're, you're miserable. <laughs> and uh, the, there are C fibers and there are A delta fibers, and we get too technical on this, but the CGRP monoclonals block the A delta fibers and uh, Botox blocks the C fibers. So you're getting both kinds of the pain transmitting pathway nerves uh, in, in the trigeminal nerve and you're blocking CGRP on both of those. So in theory, that should give you a better kind of a synergy of effects, maybe even better than just the, the adding the two together, you get an even more powerful uh, impact from adding them together. So, right, okay, so they work on similar pathways and it's a more complete blockade when you put them together. Um, and they can work in a synerg synergistic manner. Yes. Um, so what can the migraine, what would do you think the migraine community should conclude from these data? I think that uh, the migraine community should conclude that, uh, you know, the, the addition of uh, CGRP monoclonals to patients who get a partial effect from Botox, but not adequate you know it's mm -hmm. it, and we deem the general rule is is if you can get a 30 percent reduction in your migraine days from botox that is felt to be a, a decent response an, an acceptable response a lot of insurance companies look for that to decide if they want to continue to pay for botox for right. example so that 30 percent reduction while very meaningful and the, trust me we see patients all the time that would love to have a 30 percent reduction oh my goodness in their yes. migraine yeah. Uh, but even if they do achieve that with Botox, uh, they could still be left if they're like the patients in that one cohort that had 24, 25 migraine days per month. If they could, they could reduce to, you know, by, a, by 30% and still have 16, 17 migraine days per month, better than 24, 25, but still a long way from being acceptable. Mm -hmm. And so to want to take those people off of uh, Botox in order to be able to add a CGRP monoclonal doesn't really make any sense. In fact, it would be a detriment to the patients, and we shouldn't be thinking about it that way. That's what I think we should take away from it. I think doctors would look at it that way. Patients would certainly look at it that way as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then my question, my last question is related to insurance. Do you think these data might help um, get dual therapy covered by insurance at some point in the future for people who are having trouble with that? Because there are a lot of people having trouble with that right now. Yeah, I. Uh, the optimistic side of me uh, wants to say it will be helpful. Mm -hmm. It's a long way from a slam dunk. And I think, right. um, you know, if, uh, if patients, physicians know these data and can uh, use them when trying to appeal to uh, payers to get payment for these expensive treatments together, uh, I think at least it would be helpful. And, and if they can ask their, their physicians, if they get a, uh, denial, for example, of their prior authorization, if they, if their physician will ask for a medical review and provide the, the, you know, the data results from these studies uh, and from the, you know, from the, the, the theoretical review of the mechanisms of the, the A fiber, C fiber thing, um, that could be helpful. If they ask for medical review, that makes that a physician on the insurance company side of things is going to be actually looking at it. And I think that improves their chances. Right. Okay. Is there anything else you would like to add on the topic of combination therapy with Botox and the anti-CGRP monoclonal antibodies? Sure. I think, uh, I guess the, the one thing that I would say is that uh, basically everything we've talked about today really pushes us as researchers, as drug developers, um, uh, to really want to pursue some randomized uh, controlled trials of, of uh, the two uh, approaches uh, independently and together. I think if you right. can compare that way, those approaches, because from a, from a standpoint, from a practical standpoint, you're just looking at care delivery. Because mm -hmm. you know, you're saying, do we want to stop a treatment to start a new treatment where you've already gotten some benefit from, from the first treatment mm -hmm. and it doesn't make sense. And, you know, in every other medical malady that we treat or almost everyone, 
we don't do that. You know, if someone doesn't get, you know, success treating their diabetes with the with one agent, you add another one to it. You know, hypertension. You know, the list goes on and on. And why we would do it differently for chronic migraine uh, just really doesn't make sense to me. But to have randomized clinical trials would would really be helpful in this um, in this scenario. Right. And and the reason Dr. Smith is is putting so much emphasis on that is that is the gold standard of trials um, to get at the truth of whether or not a treatment is really working. Um, and it's often blinded so that it removes bias both on the part of the patient and the practitioner. And um, this is sort of where we need to get in order to to help determine whether or not this is a treatment that that we will be utilizing in the future. So um, hopefully we will get there. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Dr. Smith, for joining us today. And thank you everyone for joining us. And we hope to see you again next week on Heads Up, the weekly webcast and podcast of the National Headache Foundation. Bye-bye, everyone.